Hi Margaret. Hi Cheryl. If you can let me know in the comments if you can see and hear me okay. Sorry, let me just get this wire out of the way. Hi Sam. Hi Jill. Hi Tracy Ann. I hope you're all well on this uh well it's a rather horrible evening up in the north it's been a rather horrible day it's been bucketing it down we've been enjoying the storm that's about i hope you've managed to escape it um but it's been in full force here today oh, that wire let me see if i can get it a little bit better out of the way right so thank you joanne that's good to know Right, so today we're going to be working with the box that hopefully you have all received by now. If you haven't, um, you can get it on Craft Stash um, as a one-off purchase and you can actually get £5 off any previous boxes to this one as well. <clears throat> Sorry for my froggy throat. There's lots and lots of goodies in here. There's um, top tips. You get a little um, make catalogue in there. You get some grey board. So I haven't actually used, well, I have, but these are the extra ones. Um, the coasters, you get top tips to mark making, a little pot of blue paint, white gesso, this lovely folder. I'm sure you've all had a good rummage through, so I won't spend too long doing this. But for anyone who hasn't seen it, you get all this. So you get stamps, two sets of stamps, dies, lovely backing papers, um, cardstock and a stencil as well so we're going to be using some of these bits tonight and in the bottom you also get some tissue paper so tissue paper is completely usable i love using it for backgrounds and stuff from um, creating texture and i'm going to be using some tonight but i'm not going to be using the yellow one i'm going to be using some white that I've got laid about so I'm just going to put my little pots over there because I want to keep my little pots as they are and um, because they're so handy to take away with me in those little pots and I'll just keep refilling them and refilling them so I'll be using my bigger pots today and um, there is also a code on the site and um, I did put it on a post earlier and I'm sure that craft stash will pop it onto um, the live as well there is a code for I think 15% off any pretty gets gritty goodies so I hope you all have a little look and see what pretty gets gritty is all about right so I'm starting off with one of the grey board tags in the kit and I've just added some of the white gesso you didn't need to see me doing that so I've just given two very very thin coats of white gesso and what we are going to do now with some of the backing papers, after I'd finished die cutting and, and using them, I had some little awkward scraps left. So I've just torn up the little scraps because I like to use everything. I'm glad you like it, Cheryl. That is, that is really lovely to know. And I've had some fantastic feedback about the boxes. Um, it's, been, it's been received so well. Everyone's loving it and that just makes me happy that you've, you've liked the, what we've put in there. So as I say, I've torn up these little bits that I had left over um, and we're going to use them to create a base on here. Thank you Craft Stash for popping up that link. So we're gonna create quite a lot of texture, quite a lot of layers, but it's still going to be quite a flat project. So if you wanted to mail it or, or give it to someone, it is totally going to be mailable because we need to think about the postage, don't we? It's not cheap, not cheap at all. So what I've got here is Pretty Gets Gritty um, Transparent Gesso. And I like to use this as a collage medium. So I'm just going to pop a little bit on and take some of my scraps and lay them down. So, and a little bit over the top. So we're just going to be building some texture, some interest, in our background and this is another technique that I like to use um, to make ATCs so artist trading cards if you used a big A4 
sheet of paper or card of your choosing and did exactly these techniques on the full A4 piece, you can then cut them down into your little two and a half by three and a half inch um, ATC sizes. And you can just, oh, you can do so much. I absolutely love it. So we're just very, very randomly sticking these bits on wherever we wish. It says in the box, the only limit to your cre creativity is your imagination. It's all about sitting and playing. So we'll just add another one of this colour and then I'll take some of the other colour as well. So if there is any questions, just pop them. Thank you. The 15% off code is PGG15. Thank you, Nula. So I'm finished with that one. Let's add some of the blue in here. Oops. Let's get that off there and just make sure it's down and it's sealed. Because it's transparent gesso, you will be able to stamp over the top of it. So it's instead of using a glue for collage or um, a gel medium, which I always advocate using in mixed media, sticks anything to anything, um, the transparent gesso leaves you with a key to be able to apply stamping or watercolours or anything else over the top. So that is a little bit too precise for me so let's get some of these little bits on and mix it up. So I'll get a little bit there. I don't like anything that looks a little bit too perfect. So let's get a little squidge of randomness going. And so far, this is completely achievable and the whole tutorial tonight will be completely achievable. How long does white gesso take to dry? Well, it can be dry in seconds. So I like to use um, a very thin coat. I mean, the transparent gesso, I've used a thin coat and it is actually drying already. So I do, um, and you can force dry, you can use a heat tool as well. Um, so it, it takes seconds depending on how thick the coat is that you use. Good evening, Sarah John. Um, so not, not very long at all. So now I've done that, I want to add a little bit more colour and I'm going to use transparent gesso again. And I'm just going to pop a little bit down here in fact, that's too much, so I'm just going to spread. And I've got explosion powders. So we're going to create an acrylic paint with explosion powders. So I've got here uh, some Venus. Let's top a little bit of that in. I've got Aphrodite. Now, this one might surprise you when it starts to get mixed. You can see it just looks white in the pot, but the magic happens once you mix it in. And then we have got autumn, uh, no, we've got elf, in fact. And again, that just looks gold. And I'll say the magic happens as soon as you start to mix. So my lightest colour is this one. So I'm just going to take the bray. You also get one of these little brayers in the kit. And I'm just going to create a little patchy paint. And I'm just going to lay it over very randomly and because we've got that texture already we've got a couple of layers of the paper on there adding texture it's not going to catch everywhere so it's going to give you a really really patchy finish but you can obviously go in with your brayer and add a little bit more colour so that one is the Aphrodite I'm just going to clean my brayer off in this bit of tissue and I will now go on with the Venus so this is depending on how much you let it down, i.e. how much white gesso or transparent gesso or texture paste, you can make it either very, very vivid or you can make it very, very pale. So you could have a very pale pink if you wished. Or you can have this lovely hot pink that we have on here. 
Right, so let me just use up all of that. And you can see we've got some nice white space there as well, but not for much longer. So I'm just going to dry these two layers off here before I go on with the next one. Yeah, it's a Pretty Gets Gritty Explosion Powder. So I will show you, I'll pop this aside in a minute before we do the best, the, the next step. And I will just show you very, very quickly what the Explosion Powder is used for normally or how it's used now that is dry already so let's have a look so i've got a couple a couple of cards here so i'll use the aphrodite and you use it for making backgrounds or coloring up your mixed media pieces you can use it as a watercolour paint, you can mix it as you've seen with transparent gesso, white gesso, texture paste, which we are going to do in a little bit. Um, it is, it's a heat gun, Claire. So I've sprinkled down a little bit of the powder and it looks a bit meh, for use of a word. But once you spritz with water, the colour explodes. So you could leave it like this, or you could do what I like to do, is to pat the colour and then roll it around. So this is great for creating backgrounds. You can imagine on a nice white card, you've got that colour splash in the middle and then just a lovely, say, black sentiment across it. It's a quick, easy card and it is so great, the effects. And then you can layer the colours up as well and they won't muddy. So that's the Aphrodite. There is actually quite a few colours um, in the range. So I'll just show you, because I've showed you the white one will tr show you a gold one so again just spritz with water and when they dry you get a beautiful mica shine so if it's a gold powder that's in there you'll get a lovely gold shine coming through and if it is a silver tinge of a powder you'll get either silver or a lovely pearlescent finish so i'll pop these out of the way and they can just dry by themselves and we will come back and we will have a look at them right so we braided this Let me just wipe that off i don't want my tag getting wet we've braided this and now i'm just going to add in this white space some of the elf that we have here so i'm going to use a paintbrush so you don't have to use a brayer with the explosions you can use a paintbrush now it's a little bit lighter than I wanted so I'm just going to add a little bit more and these pots last forever so I'm just trying to have a little peek at the comments to see what's going on I'm hoping that they'll be back in stock very soon hopefully so I'll have to watch the space. So this elf here has got sort of like a navy touch to it. So you can see, because I've not mixed it properly, we're getting that lovely navy streak down there. And you can see on the mat here, we've got all different colours that have split. So it's just, it's nice not to over mix them and just pick them up and lay them down and see what we get. So I've not added too much and I have still left a little bit of white space. White space is good to use or good to leave, should I say. Let's just wipe that brush off and I will dry this off and have a peek at the comments. So yes, this is this is a heat tool. It's a super mini one. I had a lot of complaints on previous lives that my heat tool, um, my heat tool was way too noisy. So my lovely friend Louise Sims um, got me a present of this one. Oh that's nice of her. Said how good the box was in one of her lives of the day. Yeah it is. It's a super super cute brayer. I mean I have brayers that are this big but if you're just starting out in mixed media this is a super cute easy to use brayer it is really really cool right so we've done that that's dry you can see that that gesso did not take much time at all to dry 
So I'll just lift it up so you can get a closer look. So we've got the interest in the background from the papers and the different colours of the papers. And of course, all the ripped edges, they'll pick up the colour and it just gives you a really, really nice effect without trying too hard. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of the stamps and add a little bit more um, interest. So I'm going to use this one and I'm going to use the cogs. So I'm just going to get my little tiny stamp block and I'm going to go on with archival. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit. And remember, we've got different layers here going on. So this is not going to be a perfect stamped image. It does stamp perfectly, but it's not going to be because we've got all those, all those layers on there. And it is exactly the way I like to work. Whoopsie daisy. So we just add a little bit here and there, some here, a little bit there, not too much, but it's just still creating all that interest in the background. And I am actually going to use another one of them. I think I'll go for these little triangles. And I've popped the lid on. I'm so pleased so many of you could join me this evening. So I'm just going to use these cute little triangles as well and add some of these into the background. Now we've got three there, I have stamped, I was going to stamp again, I'm like no, rule of threes, let's leave it there, don't do too much. Let me just pop that back on there and I am just going to quickly just dry that stamping off again before we move on to the next step. It'll only take a minute, but I don't want to disturb any of the stamping. Of course, if you're at home and you haven't got a heat tool, just leave it for a few minutes. Sometimes I like to hurry things up by just popping them underneath the radiator on the floor and then telling everyone, don't stand on such and such that I've left in such and such room under the radiator. <laughs> I'm terrible. Right, now I'm going to take some Pretty Gets Gritty Thick Texture Paste and we're going to mix just a little bit up with one of the explosion powders that we've already used. So I'm going to use Aphrodite to give us a lovely soft blue colour. So I'm not adding too much. Always start off with a little and then you can add more as and when you need it. So you can see it colours up beautifully and they make, when you mix them with white gesso, they make amazing chalk paints as well. Really, really pretty. So I'm going to bring this back in and we're going to use the stencil. Um, still a little bit, it doesn't look like I've washed it but I have, it's still a little bit wet. I try not to wash my stencils too much. Right, so I'm just going to add a little bit for interest here and there. And because it covers all my tag, there's no need to move it at all. So let's just, we've got one, two, and let's get that little bit there, just coming in from the edge. So in three areas, so I'll just scrape this off the edges and you can see there that we have the lovely blue numbers. So let me just pop that down there out of the way and I'll have a little bit of a dry and have a look at the comments. If there is any questions at all, please leave it in the comments. I will go back in later and I will answer any questions that I have missed on any of the process or anything to do with mixed media. Right. So, because I didn't want you waiting around too much, I did actually prepare the next one. So 
you can see I've done exactly the same there is maybe just a little bit more pink on this one but that texture paste is going to take a few minutes to dry so what we are going to do next is I'm going to show you how to now make it look like you've stamped over the top of it with all this texture to get a crisp image and to do that we need tissue paper so this is just let's move some of this out of the way this is just normal tissue paper you've got yellow in the kit which is is great to use um you've bought the explosion pads you have a color chart anywhere um, I do have physical colour charts. Um, I'm not too sure if I'm allowed to say where you could find the colour charts, but if you private message me, Nikki, um, I will I will say where you can find the colour charts online. So let me just have a little drink of my brew. So Geraldine, you said I'm using different gesso. What are the differences? Right, so. I used white gesso to prime my tag, which gives you a, a lovely, bright, stark, white image. Um, and it, it stops the grey board from sucking up anything colour or water base that you've put on, um, on top of it. The transparent gesso does exactly the same, but whatever you've put underneath it, so I used it as a collage medium, you can see through it. So we can still see all... The detail of the papers underneath so it's giving us a, a primed um, background we've used it and we've made a, um, a translucent acrylic paint but you can still see what's going on underneath and then of course there's black gesso so the black gesso is 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 absolutely wonderful as well but again I will go in later and answer any of these questions in more depth um, yes, you can re-watch these videos at a later date. I'm absolutely sure they stay on the page for a while. Right, so we're going to do a little bit of stamping onto tissue paper. You can just do normal stamping um, with black ink. If that is the case, so if you're stamping on tissue paper, always make sure you go on the shiny side because it will bleed on the matte side. So... Pretty much everything is in with the boxes, Pat. There's, um, obviously I've used extra things that you can find on Craft Stash that is in my brand. Um, but the white gesso, the blue paints, um, the brayer, there's a paintbrush, the stamps, stencil, dyes, papers. There's a, an absolute whole heap of stuff in there. Right, so... I want another stamp on here. Sorry, I'm waffling. If I'm waffling, just put in the comments. Get on with it. Right, so I'm going to use this lovely hexagonal geometric stamp. And all I'm going to do, stamp up with my first mark. Yes, it is a very mucky pad. But because I'm using white emboss, I know that it's going to cover. You see the lovely faint image that is there. It's going to cover and I'm not going to see any of my dirty verse mark. So a little bit of white emboss over there. And one thing I probably should have done because absolute tissue paper is quite static and I'd put out my little sack magique as I call it. I should have wiped that over the top, but I didn't. Right, I also need a piece of paper to knock that off. So you can see that's caught and we will heat dry it or heat set it, melt it, whichever way you want to say it. And then you can also, if you wanted, um, which we might do after because you guys will have a few choices, um, we might do an image and then watercolour it with the explosions. But we will see. So I'm just going to lift this up. And there we go. We've got our lovely, crisp, geometric image. So the other thing I like to do is always, you can, you've just got to be really, really careful, Cheryl. Um, keep your heat tool moving so it, it doesn't 
singe the paper too much. I like to take either a paintbrush or a water brush and if anyone uses rice papers they will know exactly what and why I'm about to do this. So I like a very organic torn edge so this helps me do it. So you just wet the paper around and then tear ever so slightly and you get that lovely torn edge and it also stops you from getting too close to the image and maybe tearing it that's happened to me a bunch of times when I've been too lazy to do this and thought do you know what I can I can just tear around that it's fine it's not always fine and it's a good job I don't always like perfect crafting you've got to embrace those mistakes so you just keep going around with your paintbrush or your water brush just with water and tear away all these edges you could cut if you wished it's just I prefer not to so let's just get rid of that bit there see gone a little bit close and we have our image so I've actually pre-done I'm just going to wet no I'm not going to wet it I'm going to dry it off a little if it hadn't just scooted off I'm just going to dry those edges off a little bit and what we're going to do now I have got a couple more that I did earlier like I managed to contaminate it with whatever was on my fingers at the time but it's fine it adds to the interest now which is the what that's the one that we did the other one is drying nicely in the corner so now I'm just going to think where I would like these to go and it's also see I'm ripping it as well um, it's also if you if you wanted to stamp over texture paste it's a really really good way to do it so people will look at it and think oh how have you stamped over all that texture it's so crisp so I'm going to go on with my transparent gesso again hiya Jane no it, no, it doesn't scorch the tissue not if you're very very gentle with it um, and, and keep it keep it moving so let's just add transparent gesso as our college media collage medium again and then this over the top so I'm just going to add a little bit more around the edges and I'm going to really get in to that texture of the texture paste and I'm almost like forcing the tissue paper into the crevices so the texture will show through and the colour will start to pull through as well so it won't look like you've just added tissue paper over the top so it does take a little while just pounce it down with your brush and then just tickle the edges to sort of melt them out of the way so and brush it out so you don't get any air bubbles at all so you can see we've added a lovely stamped image but you can still see the texture through so we've got that piece and let's add this one where shall I add this one yeah up there I think so again transparent gesso and on we go hi Diane so again we're just pouncing down and getting all that lovely texture to show through and then of course 
I'm just trying to pick up the slightest bit. Just fold over your edges or cut them off. So I'm just going to give it a scruffle, as I like to say. And just really pounce that down. In fact, I might just add a little bit more gesso there just to wet that tissue paper and to get it really, really squidged down in between the texture. So if I lift that up now, you can see that it is almost melting into the background. I'm so glad, Joanne. Yeah, just have a go. So many people are scared of mixed media and you really, really don't need to be. Just have a go, have a play, mess around and see what you come up with. Right, let me just have a little drink of my cup of tea. I must admit, it's usually wine round, around about now, but I'm behaving tonight. Right, so what can we do next? Um, yes, Claire, you really, really have a go. Play with the things, especially if you've got the box and you've already you've got gesso in there. Um, there's a brilliant card on mark making. Um, just have a go, have a play. There is loads of tutorials on Craft World with mixed media. Um, there's loads of inspiration. Um, you can find me on Craft World as well if you want to follow me. I post things up and I will become more regular. I promise. Um, and I'm always about just find me for a question. Nothing is a silly question at all. Right. What am I going to do now? I said that... I'm just trying to think where I'm going to go now. I know one thing I do need to do. I need to dry that off a little bit before I, I can edge it. And then we need to think of a focal point. We need a sentiment on here. And we also, I mean, it's fine as it is. It's lovely. But we could do with something that just has a little bit of dimension. Um, so I am thinking of using the beautiful butterfly that's in the kit. There we go, we're dry. See, didn't take too long at all. You can see that tissue really has melted into the background now. So let's use the butterfly. I'm going to get out my ancient stamp pad just so I can get a perfect image. Sorry guys for knocking you, making you feel seasick. Let's use just some little pieces of scrap I've got around, just some white cards. Nope, use it straight from the pot. Do you know what? I am so glad that that, sorry for my head in the way. I've picked out a piece of card that is, do you know, that's where that stamp was. The age is just an imaginary note. Do you know, I was searching for that all over. That's because I was doing, uh, I was doing some crafting with this box on my group the other week. And I'd lost, I'd lost that sentiment. It's just normal tissue paper, Claire. So gesso is an, a primer. So you use it to prime any surface that you need um, to become porous. So if you were using um, an ink spray on glass, it wouldn't stick. So you need to prime it first. You could use transparent gesso, which would not... Um, no, it is absolutely possible to make something just using what's in the box. You don't need to buy lots of extra things. I'm just trying to show you all the other things that you can do as well. Um, so I was saying the transparent gesso would give you a primed base to your glass, 
but it would not take away from the beauty of the glass. So you could add colour on top of it, but you'd still be able to see through it using transparent gesso. If you use white gesso, your box would be, your bottle would then become. Do you know what? I've got one just over here. Let me just grab this bottle so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is a bottle. As you can see, it's a, a glass bottle and I've primed it with white gesso so then my paint will stick to it. And I've also used the white gesso to um, dry brush as well. And this is just, it's just got bits of fabric on it. It's all stuck with gel medium. Um, cabochons, beads, seed beads, shells, little bottles, anything that I found lying about. Super, super easy to make. Um, and that's using white gesso so you can you can prime surfaces you're in Quebec wow I know um Australia someone in Australia got their kit because they were very 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 happy about it and tagged me in lots of posts to say it had, uh, it had arrived which made me very very happy right so shall we do a little bit of explosions on this yeah the white gesso can be mixed with a color of paint to add to a glass surface absolutely yeah so basically gesso just makes your colors stick to things that it wouldn't usually or it gives an even base to whatever you're working on Hi Pauline and Yvonne. Oh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? So, am I, yes, I need to die cut that first, don't I? So, we'll die cut it before I colour it. Where is, there we go. I knew I'd put it somewhere. So, use my tiny, tiny little one. And, as with anyone, are you guys exactly the same? your routine in your craft room for stuff and it's always underneath something somewhere that it shouldn't be or you swear that you didn't put it there so let's find the butterfly die hi sue right i'm just trying to find the die that matches the stamp without spilling everything everywhere. Never got a big enough work surface. So, let's just pop this on here and pop that over. And do you know what? I think I've been a little bit frugal with this card, but it doesn't matter. Right. And of course it won't, it won't line up because I'm on a live. I'm making a right pig's ear out of that, aren't I? Right, let's hope we get this through without disturbing it. Yes, it is. This stamp, along with many others, I actually have a piece of card somewhere with, I've just seen it across the, across here. So there we go, there's the die that coordinates with it. So let's get all this out of the way. I'll show you the other stamps because I have got them all stamped out on a piece of white card. Let's get all this mess out of the way. How can I cause so much chaos in such a small amount of time? Right. So here are the stamps actually stamped out. So there's loads of sentiments in there because I love adding words to everything. Um, there's numbers in there. You've got your infinity. You've got these lovely geometric. So these, this box is actually perfect for male or female makes um, because, I mean, the light bulb and the geometric shapes, the cogs, you can really go to town on a man's card. You've got ink splats. Um, the only fe feminine thing to me about it is this butterfly. Um, and then you've got some really great sentiments as well. Age is just an imaginary number. You know, anniversary card. You can be my prime number. 
another birthday, who's counting? And you've got these great little texture elements as well. So, and of course these ones here, which I'll probably use on the tag um, to make to make up our own sentiment. So, and of course you've got the light bulb, you've got the coordinating die that cuts this out as well. Um, I'll just show you very, very quickly. So you've actually got the die that cuts that out. You've got the swirly, swirly element for inside it. And then when you've done that, you can actually cut out and emboss the screw bottom. So if you imagine, you're layering, you're layering this up. So, and of course there's other great, I mean, that's another fantastic one. This is an, another good one. This is at like a freebie stencil. So you could die cut this with the circle and then use it as a stencil and it gives great circles. Um, and again, the cogs, absolutely, we are gonna use the cogs in a minute. There's so many things that you can do with this, right, let's make sure that I've not left anything about. Right, let's pop that out of the way and a little bit of brew time. Hi Sarah Lou. You want to order the box? Well it is um it is available for order. I know I had so many questions when I when I previewed the box um a few weeks ago. I had so many people asking if they could buy the box and the answer is on craft stash yes you can you can't get it when everyone else gets it i think the subs subscriptions go out first um but then you have the option to order the box just singly but i think the 12 month subscription it works out something ridiculous like um it works out that each box is like 20 pounds a box if i'm wrong craft stash please correct me but that is a ridiculous price for the amount of things that you're getting in these boxes. It's crazy. Right, so we are using this tag. Um, what colour explosion? So that's the one that we're going to, what colour explosion? We're going to go for the pinky one, um, the navy sort of one, or the bright teal one. If you let me know in the comments do you know what tina i saw your i'm, I'm going to try and attempt the word the bokeh technique the other day you posted that in my group um and i need to actually go and have a look and see what that's all about because that was a beautiful card um and i'm excited to have a go so right thank you tracy and we're going pink so what i'm going to do is probably something that you've done a thousand times with your distress inks You've just been looking at a stamp saying age is just a number for a special male friend's birthday. Wow. So I've just popped down a little bit and I'm just going to pick, pick it up on my butterfly and I'm not going to waste that. I've got some scrap card here so I might use this for my sentiment. I'm just going to pick up everything that I can with that to wet it a little bit more so always remember to try and pick up as much as you can of any product that you've used so look we've got loads now we've even got like a little hint of blue going through from where i've picked up from what's already on on here so that'll dry lovely with all these little swooshes in there and it'll have a lovely metallic finish um so let's just dry off our beauty bottle flutter by. It is well worth it, so it really, really is. Right, a lot of you are saying teal as well, so let's, well, let's add a little bit of teal onto there as well. So we'll get two colours. I'm going to try and just get out the tiniest amount. These bottles last forever. I've had my bottles for three years now and they're not anywhere near close to running out. So I'm just trying to pick up 
tiny, tiny bits of the blue because we've got quite a lot of pink in there and we're going to get a lovely, lovely pur purple tone where they're mixed together. So let's just dry that off. No, it's not. It's a pretty gets gritty, pretty explosion powder. So I think these, you know, the two that we squirted before, um, spritz before even are now dry so i'll just i'll if you can see that the lovely shimmer on there but where we've not swooshed it around they're not completely dry but look can you see that silver through the blue there and if i just wiggle it give it a little wiggle and this one's not dry either yet but you can see how vivid the gold is on there so depending on what color um is the bottle so that was the the gold one and that was the silvery one is the color of mica that pops through so let me just have a little drink of my brew and so we've got that we've got that i'm going to do you know what i did not pull out my pen for edging so I need to get that because nothing's finished if it's not edged so I'm just going to, have to oh there it is I'm just going to use my pro marker and of course we need a sentiment and I've also it looks like I've knocked half of these flames so we've only got three to work with so we have the cogs in the set as well so i'm just going to edge this because we might have the cogs coming off the edge yet um or we might not but we'll just edge it in case so just edging your make really draws the eye into what you have done so i'm just going to edge my butterfly it's still a little bit of wet so of course the wet paper might pull in some of the ink onto it which is fine i don't mind that at all i quite like the feathery effect that it creates when you edge on a wet paper so let's just edge that and i could go in perfectly with the smaller side and get into these corners <coughs> sorry oh never usually talk so much right so we've got these cogs as well so i think we will let's give our butterfly a bit of dimension so i think butterfly where are you going to go go there and we can have our cogs coming out from underneath so how i've actually done these cogs is i've cut i like my die cuts to be more of a chipboard shape a, a, a chipboard thickness so I've actually cut out of I think it was 200 GSM card and I've layered together just two pieces so it's extra thick but I have layered die cuts before that you've got quite a good like half centimeter um width to it when I'm making a really really dimensional project so that's something to bear in mind with your with your dies layer them up to make them chunkier right so i think that's going to go like that we need a sentiment so it's that let's just dry this off we might as well use it we made it we might as well use it yeah it's just a really really quick easy way pauline just to edge with the marker <coughs> I've got a real catch in my throat now. Right, so the card's bent up a little bit. Because it's dry, you can see all the mica in there. So let's just pull that down and think about a sentiment. 
um, don't want to use delightful. I think I'm going to go for positive power. So let's find my super skinny slim and place that there. Yes, I'm, I know that it's it's not on completely, but it will do. So you can cut these stamps down to make each word individual, but I usually um, stamp out all my sentiments like this and don't cut the stamp down and then just snip the bits out that I want. So yeah, I'm going to go for the paler paler side. So let's just hope I can get a nice crisp edge. So what were we going for? Positive power. So I would stamp out all of these rather than doing them each individually, cutting them down because you've got a risk of losing them. Um, I would just stamp a full A4 sheet all over and then just snip um, snip in to the sentiments you want or just snip them out all in one go and have a little pot of sentiments so we are going for so I'm just cut that one out so I want do you know what I was just looking then at what I'd stamped out and I was like mm, I'm gonna change my mind but decided not to so snip that one out we'll trim it down in a moment and this one as well so let's just snip this edge off so we've got positive power because I think thinking positive thoughts works a treat for us so let's just edge it again. I'll try not to disturb the ink. Do you know what? Everything I do has got a little mucky fingerprint on. I don't know if you caught the, the tissue paper before, but there was a, a fingerprint right in the middle of it. Right, so let's start to build this. Um, and I'm going to use my gel medium. I use gel medium for everything i stick everything with gel medium even when i'm card making my layers um it's all all with gel medium so let's just get a little bit tap down here and there and get that on there I'm going to put my butterfly on now and I am going to stick it down a little bit further than I originally thought and I can just lift not taking the gel medium right to the edge I just want a little bit of lifting those wings and if you do squidge any through like this do not worry about it because it dries completely clear. Uh, the gel medium is available on Craft Stash and there is 15% off today. And it is, I use it for everything. Right, let's get the quote on. Well, let's think where we're going to put the quote first. So, and we could go up there. We could pop it on our butterfly or we could go down here. So while I just mix up the last thing that I want to do, um, where should I put the quote? We'll do a little bit of uh, top, middle or bottom. And while you're deciding that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit of sparkle. I'm not a glitter person. I'm just going to use some of my Pretty Gets Gritty Gritty Crystal 
crystal topping. So I'm just going to pop a little bit into this glass dish and I'm going to find where I've just put the lid so I don't knock it everywhere. I'm going to add a little bit of gel medium in there and just mix it all together. Just pick it up with the gel medium because as I say I'm not a glitter person but I do like a little bit of sparkle so I'll mix that up so where have we gone who was the first top Cheryl fastest finger first I think we're covering multiple TV shows aren't we right, I've just used my spatula so let's get this on I'm just gonna have it popping over the edge so positive power and the last thing I'm going to do is add this. It won't look like much at all at the minute, but you've got to wait for it to dry. So I'm just going to add over the cogs just a little bit here and there. I will pop a picture on Craft Stash tomorrow um, and onto Craft World as well when this is completely dry. And as usual, I'm just going to scrape the rest out with my fingers and I'm just going to bring it across my butterfly and just get these little bits in. And the last thing I'm going to do uh, when I find it is add some little silver splatters. So I'm using my silver patina. These are also on craft stash and just wipe off that I'm going to get a tiny tiny little bit out onto there add a little bit of water to it mix it up and just wait for it to to dissolve you can also watercolor with these as well So make sure it's all mixed and then add on some silver splashes and once it's dry you'll get lovely silver and then turn your project round and splash from a different direction right so that is my make um for tonight's live i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you love using the box please post your makes um onto craft world onto craft stash into the chat um tag me in it if you can because i would absolutely adore seeing them so thank you very much and i hope to be back soon Bye.